I'm sure you'll come across lots of articles and lots of videos that go through a whole bunch of different terminology for all the different types of notes that you add into a Zettelkasten. And having struggled with it for about 18 months myself, trying to get my head around all the different terminology and how I should actually be organizing the information, what I've come to realize is that actually really what it comes down to is just two different types of note and then a couple of rules around how you actually grab information and start writing those notes. At this point, Zettelkasten probably doesn't need much introduction, but if perchance this is the first video that you've come across about Zettelkasten, let me give you a quick rundown. Zettelkasten is German for slip box, literally meaning a box containing slips of paper. It's a method that was first developed by Niklas Luhmann, if I'm getting my German pronunciation correct, who was a German sociologist. And during his career, he published more than 70 books and over 400 articles. And this level of output, he really attributes to his thinking system. And using this Zettelkasten system, Luhmann really focused on understanding as well as forming connections between all of the information he was adding into it. And so when I'm doing something new, I like to have something that is a little bit less overwhelming and intimidating to get started with and with the added benefit of hindsight what I now know is that there are things within traditional note-taking that can be extended and moved into a Zettelkasten flow. So let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to introduce is this idea of fleeting notes and you don't need to call them that you can call them whatever you want but really what a fleeting note is is something that I'm sure you're already doing. As you're going through something, whether that's reading it, watching it, listening to it, and you feel compelled to like write something down or want to star or underline or highlight, that is a fleeting note. And sometimes you might even add a thought or annotation or symbol next to it to give yourself a bit more context as to why that idea is interesting. So those are your fleeting notes. And they're probably more commonly known as highlights and annotations. And so once you've done that, you then have a whole list of fleeting notes. For a digital Zettelkasten, which is what I'll focus on here, you will then need to move those notes onto your digital tool of choice. And it is this migration exercise where you work out which of the notes you've made are actually worth saving. Because you don't need to spend all the time moving all of them over. Any of the ones that don't make the cut, just leave them and the notes and highlights and annotations that you're moving across into your system, these are what will become your permanent notes, the notes that populate your Zettelkasten system. And so in terms of the types of notes, that's it, you're done. There's the notes you take on the fly and then there's the notes that you kind of process and actually save properly. So to get started with a Zettelkasten, I would practice organizing your notes and then transferring the ones that matter most into a system. Now, a key distinction here when we're doing a Zettelkasten versus any other kind of digital system is that rather than having one book note with all of the highlights, you wanna save each of those highlights and annotations individually within your system. The system is built around having kind of individually separated ideas that you can then interconnect and bring together and explore how they all relate to each other. So permanent notes are just one of these ideas that you've come across. They should also be standalone, so there should be enough information in that permanent note that you don't need to look anything else up or jump back to where it was in your book. These should not be long notes, just a few sentences, enough so that you can get the gist and understanding of what the concept is and why it's interesting to you. So transfer the original text, write it in your own words, if you can explain it in your own words, that's a good marker of you actually taking on board that concept. So as your Zettelkasten grows over time, you'll be adding more of these permanent notes into your system. And as you're gathering new ones, you should be mulling over and considering how they are related to the other permanent notes that are already within your system. And you can add as many of these connections as you want to any of the relevant other notes in your system. And so. To recap, take notes like you do currently, making highlights, scribbling in the margin, however you take notes currently, keep doing that. In Zettelkasten terminology, these are your fleeting notes. But think of them as highlights and annotations if that's easier for you. You then have the task of deciding which are the most important notes that you made that are going to be saved and added into your Zettelkasten system. The notes that you decide to save and keep and add into your system are the permanent notes. 
and they should be one note per idea, not a lengthy book note containing all of them just in one place. And each individual note you should write in your own words and then you should connect it to other notes that are within your system. Now, the first few months are the hardest because you're doing something totally different and thinking about your information probably in quite a different way to what you're used to when you think about taking notes. But if you commit to it, you will start to see how your knowledge is evolving and growing. And you'll be able to link things in interesting ways that you otherwise might not have been able to do, which is really neat and cool as you see it start to come together. Thanks very much for watching and hope to see you again soon.